Alright, hey YouTube, Mucklick here, and I have been getting linked this video a lot over the last few months, asking me to react to it, and I'm still really weird about reacting to videos because I want to get, like, the permission of the people doing it, unless they're just being, like, a total hater, in which case I feel like the door is open. And I was like, I don't, I don't know if, I don't know this guy, I haven't talked to him, I've never had any back and forth with him, I don't know if I want it. Not Josh, he's just the first frame of the video. And someone was like, oh, but this guy's reacted to your videos. Well, shoot, doors open then. All right, let's do this. Okay, so this is why does everyone simp for Guild Wars 2? First impressions. Let's see what he has to say. I would absolutely any day tell people to go and play Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2, in my opinion, still does the best job of delivering story when it comes to MMORPGs. The world feels extremely alive. You have people fighting. This MMO is definitely worth the money. Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2. Guild Preach, Mighty Teapot. Wars 2. Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2. Oh, oh, oh! Who is that handsome potato? Look at that. Yo, mom, get the camera. Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2. <laughs> Oh, really? We'll see about that. Guild Wars 2, a game <laughs> I've never touched before despite it being 11 years old. And not touching 11 year olds is really strange behavior for a YouTuber in 2023. Now, no, that's the Smash community. Once upon a time, I did play a dervish in a completely unrelated game with certainly no lore or story significance, this one called Guild Wars. But that was way back when we could call a Hurricane Katrina and no one wanted to have f with it. Ah, too. <laughs> I made it I made a joke just like a week ago that we need to stop with these feminine names for hurricanes because no one evacuates. We need to start calling them like Megatron or something because the, especially Florida, they're just like, no man, I'm staying. Katrina's coming over. 2005 the good old days. But we're not here to reminisce over an age when the timeline wasn't irreversibly shattered by turning a gorilla into Swiss cheese. I, knew, I knew there was a Harambe meme coming. Because a child wanted free water skiing lessons. See, I'm here to entertain you and you're here to get the wish.com version of brain damage. And maybe if we're both lucky, I'll be able to offer to you an opposing viewpoint to all I like how he says the wish.com version of brain damage. And maybe if immediately shows Jormag possessing this guy. We're both Looking super derpy. Lucky, I'll be able to offer to you an opposing viewpoint to all those boomers who keep themselves off over how good Guild Wars 2 is. So let's. <laughs> you either die young or you live long enough to see yourself become a boomer. Let's waste no more words and see how disappointing Guild Wars 2 is about to be. Let's start off simple and pick that one objectively superior character race. And we might as well pick our class or profession too while we're at it. Right off the bat, Guild Wars 2 gets pretentious on us. Ooh, I'm so fancy because I've got an animal race that doesn't look like each and every other furry race out there. I get the impression that when first creating the char in Guild Wars 1, someone on the design team one day looked over at their house cat and realized that it doesn't in fact have a gigantic pair of unwieldy bolt-on tits. Thus do I'm going to be pausing a lot, I can see it now. Being the Guild Wars 2 team to keep the design for the sake of continuity and banishing the furry menace back into other unnamed games out there. And yeah, that's great, but so what? I can name... Two. Two other MMOs out there that don't have furries in them. I think. I mean, just look at this game. It's already acting like it's better than everyone else out there. Next, you're going to tell me that the people who play this game shower regularly. Look. Probably not good that he showed teapot when he said that. <laughs> Let's get down to brass tacks. I'm here to have a bad time and dunk on all those Guild Wars 2 simps, okay? Not many, but the most hardcore of MMO players will realize this. But there's a delicate balance of salted misery to be maintained within this genre. And if we're gonna figure out how to be miserable, there's only really one place to start this journey. Reddit. And within the cesspool of- I honestly thought he was going into the PvP lobby. I don't know if Reddit is worse or better than that. Circle jerking mod incels. We got no help. Big surprise. But I did stumble across this useful little link right here. And a little later, upon returning to my post, we found a surprising number of people with a brain who typed something worth reading. These posts right here have me pretty concerned, actually. You see, they may not look like much, but this kind of positive behavior is disruptive to the natural- e is it common for people to end up becoming meta-slaves? It's incredibly uncommon among the player base. For me, the best part is the open world. 
Uh, it's a lot of good, which others have pointed out. Okay, so these are all positive posts ecosystem of MMO related Reddit. But moving on to that link I found, we've got two choices here. We can pick our character through player choice or by player time. Playtime probably means that people are having a worse experience with the game than just not liking the way something looks. So let's go with that. So now in no uncertain terms, we know we'll be playing the cat wizard that escaped the Harry Potter race war. So on to the character creator. Hmm, let's see. Mesma, illusions, finesse, misdirection. All the appropriate skills to craft the perfect- The suicide forest? Rose, come on. Perfect YouTube apology after entering a Japanese forest. While we design Simba's disabled little brother, you may notice some real chunky polygons sticking out here and there. But a fair portion of this is covered up decently by the amount of options and sliders we've got available. And on- Don't worry, when it comes to clipping, you definitely pick the best race by choosing Char. They have like no armor clipping at all. On top of those sliders, we've got some presets. We can even change the background lighting in case God didn't like you having a working pair of eyes. And there's even a slider so we can decide if we're going to be short or recognized as a person by society at large. All of this is shockingly well put together, but this isn't gameplay, so let's speed run this a bit. All right. There we go. Completely indistinguishable from your average char. Now then, let's get in game. What? Law. Backstory. What the fuck is all this? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> now this is pure speculation on my part, but I get the feeling they're trying to turn our character into a person. I thought I was supposed to be playing main character generic hero man number six billion and one. All right, fine. I'll admit, the character creator is good enough that it's got me wondering why this isn't industry standard for every other MMO out there. God, and this game is 11 years old and we still haven't evolved? You know what, don't worry about it. I'm sure with my choice of the least played race profession combo that we're about to have a bad time in the starting area. So welcome to Smokestead. Turns out that the Cat Chimera people beat the snot out of the previous owners of this land so bad that they all became eternally butt mad blue check mark Twitter ghosts. Jesus. <laughs> That is the best summary of Ascalon I've ever heard. This is the least played starting area. Now, before we continue with our journey, I feel it's important for me to give you some backstory of this game before things get confusing. The premise of Guild Wars 2 is that we're playing as a cat monkey man in a game developed by the children of Satan, who in unison with a group of money hungry lizard men published this game, proving that sometimes math isn't bullshit and two negatives can sometimes produce something. <laughs> Why is Horizon Forbidden West here? Positive. This game is all about adventuring your way through a single player game with other people that bother you every now and then. In the world of Tyra Banks, who's got a pretty severe collection of bad- Tyra Banks instead of Tyria? Wow! And dragons laying around. Strange occurrences happen in this MMO that don't happen in others. Like your backstory choices having mild consequences as opposed to none at all. And your character developing somewhat of a personality. In the long run of the Guild Wars 2 story, we're here to inflict unwanted diversity upon the world- Great timing on the pause. Yeah, thanks incoming van old like our name is netflix and transport some uppity gecko with a bad habit of organizing a domestic terrorism or two into the afterlife and i'm gonna stop there because this is a first impression and that's just the base game and if you want the rest of the story you might as well go get a phd in quantum theoretical physics because that would be far more straightforward than understanding anything beyond each expansion featuring some version of big lizard mad now except for living world 3 where one of the human gods becomes the living embodiment of china and decides that everything is edible through his personalized slopey straw but none of what, <laughs> what? what is the filter this man sees the world through what the hell? That really matters right now because I'm a giant bipedal cat magician surrounded by unarmed but suspiciously blue protesters in need of some excessive force. So after proving to our superiors that no one is above the law except us, we even get some ringside seats to desecrating the graves of the indigenous. In particular, one of their leaders who really wanted to be a power ranger before he died and revived himself into an oversized Funko Pop. Now looking at this world law-wise, everything tends to fit together very neatly. We've been told from the start that the char 
brutal and warlike. And we, as a character in this game, get to be a part of that tradition. There's only really one problem. I, as a player in this game, don't really take any of these schizophrenic apparitions seriously at all. I mean, look at this. This guy's been beating me up for the last half an hour. And my health bar's barely moved. At no point in this game so far am I in any serious danger. And I'm not really being forced to learn how vital any of my specific abilities are. But moving on, after defeating the last statue of Stalin in an admittedly epic battle, I was sitting are, here but moving wondering on. why he went through the work to put a mustache on this for all these frames. And then he said Stalin at the After very defeating end. the last statue of Stalin in an admittedly epic battle, we are ready to leave Tutorial Warzone into Tutorial Starting Area, which is the same place just with less ghosts and not instanced. So welcome to Smokestead. The transition here is a little bit odd. We've now gone from battle-hardened soldier to pest control handyman who's here to autocorrect a few sentient rats out of existence and learn a little bit more about the world around us. And look. <laughs> It's true, it's true. Some of the, uh, I, honestly, I'm glad he played the Char and not the Norns. Because the Norns, the, the starter story is just, is not even like there's danger. It's just like, we don't have enough beer. Look, as much as I want to be negative about Guild Wars 2, I can't say I hate this experience. We get a few more abilities, learn some important skills like how to dodge, and learn to develop a case of epilepsy from all the spell effects happening around us. Come to think of it. I thought, come on. I think Final Fantasy 14 is way worse with the epilepsy. That's one of the problems with this game. You see, combat is interesting. More on that in a second. But there's just so much visual clutter that it's difficult to... He weapon swapped. Oh my god, the abilities change when you switch weapons. And not just that, every profession wields the same weapon in a completely different way. Which just adds to the fantasy. Wait, 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 every wait, profession wait, wait. wields the same weapon in a completely... Mesmer Engineer Thief Floridian? <laughs> <laughs> different way, which just adds to the fantasy of the game. Someone with the Guardian profession will pick up a two-handed sword and identify it as a manually operated wood chipper. But a Mesmo will pick up the same sword and instead see a long metal wand made for ranged combat. A Vada Kedavra. Can't believe that shit worked. Now, I've never in my life thought of a sword as a ranged weapon, but Guild Wars 2 made that possible, and I can appreciate that. As I played my way through the starting area, though, certain unavoidable realities about the combat began to dawn on me. As I've hinted at, magic effects in this game are so bright I feel like I'm staring into the f***ing sun sometimes. But that's about the worst I have to say about it. Guild also, if you looked into the eclipse uh, yesterday, please see a doctor. Guild Wars 2 has somehow made a hybrid tab targeting system that feels immersive and smooth to play, even in 2023. Part of this likely has to do with the fact that if I've positioned myself wrong and use an ability, my character doesn't tell me, do but instead it's more of a sure, I don't mind flailing the sword around in the Walmart parking lot, but it's also more than that. Almost every single combat factor feels important. Your timing, your positioning, how you choose to approach a fight depending on your profession, all of it matters, except what ability you decide to press, at least at the lower levels. Now I'm sure at endgame that statement is likely to not hold true, but right here, right now, it honestly doesn't feel like it matters what button I press because my character is a walking god of death. Everything I touch just dies. And for someone who's never played MMOs before and picked up Guild Wars 2, that's the thing that's likely to take them out of the experience the most. There's no initial challenge, but other than that, there's plenty of weapons to experiment with, a not overwhelming amount of buttons to push, and all of what you're doing for weapons to experiment with, a not okay. overwhelming amount of buttons. He's running full Cygnus. I mean, yeah, there's a not overwhelming number of buttons to push when everything's a passive thing on the bar to push, and all of what you're doing feels well tied to the fantasy of Tony the Tiger's albino brother looking for his lost dad. While we go through all these little quests that build up the world a little bit, we finally come of age at level 10 and are given permission to leave the opium fields to pursue our own personal jihad. We enter into a city that <laughs> gives off first person Kenshi vibes. More importantly, we're given our first mount. Huh. Now that was oh man, dude, I forgot about that. Yeah, because for a long time, you didn't get mounts till Path of Fire, but then they had an offer where they made it to where after level 10, you got a rental raptor, so you got a taste for it. And then it would be like, hey, if you buy the expansion, you can keep this. It was underwhelming. No quest line, no story integration. Just congrats on level 10. Here's a dinosaur. Now, I don't know about you, but back in my day, playing WoW, when everyone thought that you could fix the paladin new you, but back- Hold on. I like how when he starts reminiscing, he puts on actual rose-colored glasses. That's a nice touch. 
Back in my day, playing WoW, when everyone thought that you could fix the Paladin Nuke Sword by fishing, when you got your first mount, it felt amazing. You had to grind for hours to make enough money to afford that bastard, because it's likely you wasted all your money on repair bills from exploration-related deaths or doing something else stupid in-game. And you had to walk to your computer desk uphill, barefoot, in the snow, while it was raining fire, all while your dad chased after you with a belt. But here in Guild Wars 2, it's just kinda... And then that all changed when I pressed the W key. I'm about to go. For those that don't know, in World of Warcraft, when you get on a mount, it's basically just your character moves 100% faster. You can still turn on a dime, you can stop in an instant, you can just U turn and re keep full momentum. You know, it, uh, it's effectively like if, if it wasn't for the graphic, you're just go You would just go, oh, I'm twice as fast now. That's it. Guild Wars 2 was one of the first major MMOs that actually had like acceleration and deceleration and wider turning. And then like the, the, con the, uh, mountain attack and stuff like that. Also, yeah, you have the big, uh, the big jumps of the round. I, I take back what I said. This iguana feels pretty good. This mount doesn't just have one singular speed, it accelerates from a stationary position. It has a turn radius, it even has abilities. And as much as WoW bit off of Guild Wars 2 for the Dragonflight mount system, it still feels like they've done a better job in the original, and we're still currently only level 10. God damn it, Guild Wars 2, why can't you just let me hate you like an MMO player normally hates everything they play? I want... I want that hoodie. Where do I get that hoodie that looks like chainmail? Haven't you taken enough from me? All right, fine. I'll admit that the hybrid tab targeting system feels good and immersive to play with. I'll begrudgingly accept that this little ability bar isn't overcomplicated or oversimplified, all while it keeps the character's class abilities in line with the in-game lore. But do they really have to make things straightforward enough that some new player who's never played an MMO before can stumble into this game and enjoy themselves? And that they could probably do this without looking up a single guide online? Won't you consider the suffering this causes a veteran player like me. How am I, as a salty old player, supposed to gatekeep this experience when even the <laughs> A and D keys are bound to strafing instead of keyboard turning by default? How am I supposed? Oh, thank God, something to about. There's an in-game store. This <laughs> now let's see if he actually does it justice. Let's see if he actually does it justice. So for those that don't know, real quick, the in-game store, there is an in-game store, but this is an MMO that does not have a subscription fee, right? Uh, the store has quality of life stuff, and you can buy anything in the gem store with in-game gold, So, right? So yeah, you can throw down five bucks to get something in the store, or you can just spend a few hundred in-game gold to get the same thing. So like as someone who's been max level for a while, I can get anything and everything I want from the store without spending any real money. Uh, so most people consider it pretty fair. Uh, however, let's see what he says. This game is pay to win. Absolutely disgusting. I have never in my life seen a cash shop so, so mediocre. God damn it, who am I kidding? There's much worse out there. Keep in mind, this doesn't make this acceptable in my opinion, but it could be much worse. The biggest thing to complain about here is probably the utility and upgrade tabs. From what I can tell, the utility and upgrade tabs are all about creating a problem to sell a solution. With the old pay for convenience line attached to it. You know how. Yeah. I will say, as someone who makes guides for this game, I recommend to people to get almost nothing from those tabs like transmutation charges like they give you thousands of those just for playing the game trading post express why do you need to access the trading post from anywhere there's there's people you can talk to all over the game for that you know stuff like that there's there's very there's very few things in here that would be like even if you were rich that i would recommend getting how it goes extra bag space bank that's, tabs that's crafting true. shortcuts that kind of stuff now all of that stuff i expected but then it takes a little bit of a darker turn extra character slots waypoint unlocks the fact that gold doesn't just convert to gems but gems also convert to gold that is 
pretty low. But again, admittedly, it's surprising it's not worse considering the developer. Right, okay, so you can take real money and buy gems and then turn those gems into gold and basically buy gold in the game. This does, this has a couple of things. Like one, there's like no gold sellers because it's already in the game. However, none of the max level gear, save for one weapon, can you obtain with money right like the max level like max level legendary equipment and ascended stuff just isn't tradable with one exception so even if you have decided to throw some stupid amount of money in the game that doesn't get you the best stuff you still have to actually play the game so again it's it, that is the reasoning that most veteran players don't really care because you can't pay to win and in things like PvP, uh, your gear doesn't matter. In PvP, it just equalizes everyone. Your gear is just cosmetic. It's just how you look. That's it. Not saying that that is, like, perfect, but that's how it is, and that's why most people don't mind it and publisher of this game. But at least there's a solution to this as a first time player. You see, I don't care about being the best, most well kitted out Guild Wars 2 player. I don't care about high performance. Yeah, I'm just here for an experience. So with this one magic spell, we can get rid of all these problems. Now let's get back to our adventure. Just so after eggs. dicking about in the Mad Max Thunderdome for a while, things at this point become just a little bit formulaic. We do our quests, we level up, we get thrown into some story-based instant stuff. We're just kind of muddling around and what the hell is that? Hold on one sec. Oh, so it's like a point of interest discovery map thingy. Anyway, as I was saying, we're kind of just... What the hell is that? Okay, I see what he's doing. So he's going to go into talking about how there's constantly things that like detour you and get your attention and distract you in this world. One second, I'm not missing this. Whew. Well, that was fun. Now, what was I saying? At this point, I can't even remember. And that seems to be the thing with Guild Wars 2. There's a ton of content, world events, jumping puzzles with rewards, open-ended quests with a lot more to experience, even at these lower levels. Getting sidetracked feels almost mandatory as you level up. Guild Wars 2 has somehow struck- Mandatory. Yeah, so for anyone new to Guild Wars 2, you might be seeing me review this video for the first time. There's a thing in the game called events. And events would be just like, on your mini-map, there's an orange circle and there's something going on there. And you go there and you do it. And if the event is successful, it might lead to another event. Like, hey, you protected the convoy uh, from this attack. The convoy is going to start moving again. Stay with them if you wish to and help protect them from future attacks. And then it might be like a chain, like an event, an event, an event. And every one of those is like a quest complete reward. And then if they reach their final destination, it'll be like the uh, you know, a, a large thing will happen. Maybe a big boss will spawn or something. Um, and there's many of these event chains in various zones that can trigger uh, very large things to happen if people are getting involved, which these are not related to the quests in the game. These are things that just happen like every couple, like uh, like this specific event might happen every two hours here. And then it, whether or not the events after it happened depend on if there's people getting involved, stuff like that. Struck a good balance between the story-based quests and helping us explore the world through side quests and whatever else we want to do. And that's one of the hidden hallmarks of a great MMO. You're just not able to help yourself and you need to know what that thing you saw was in the distance. Or the game giving you every opportunity to be involved in some dynamic world event. Now combine that with Guild Wars 2's fever dream-like graphics and it's like being the world's worst ADHD patient on peyote by the time i had regained my <laughs> what is your filter i grip on my focus i was level 20 looking for a dad i once lost in an orphanage shaped daycare all those years ago after finding him i realize why he may have abandoned us look i'm no expert in genetics but we're a little bit uh, on the light side for that to be our dad but either way he decides to accept us as his real son under the condition that we free him from prison and get revenge on his old gang for him so that's exactly what we do what's no for any non guild wars players during the character creation when it asked about his background and he said what the f is this he chose the my dad's in prison option um each race has three different options like the, the human three options are different from the cat people three options stuff like that so uh there's what is there five races so there's like 15 different backstory options that you can choose from a character creation which just give you another quest that you can uh you can do if you wish to do so
Possible about this quest line though is that the game gave us the option to keep him in prison. What's impressive here is that the MSQ is based all on the one backstory I chose way back in the character creator. Eventually though, we pay our father's bail, find the feral cats that he'd been hanging out with and sterilize them away from life, resolve the story for now and are back to adventuring out in the open world. Now I had come into this game without reading a single guide or watching a single video. The only thing I had done was make a post on Reddit and that convinced me that interacting with people was a bad idea. But through witnessing my sheer unbridled stupidity, I had someone who's been playing this game since the birth of our current universe expose me to both the likely origin of the no-no <laughs> flu that gets you shadow banned for mentioning it, and eventually the first dungeon I had been looking for. Now this has been a long trip, but not an unenjoyable one. I wish I could have stuck to my original goal and been a salty little baby about this game. Maybe make a spicy thumbnail for this video, rake in those clickbaited wow. rage views saying this game is terrible, but I just yeah, we're not I can't do it. Guild Wars 2 is not without its problems, but it is still an incredible MMO. It took me by surprise how well loved this game is by its players and community at large. This entire MMORPG can be summarized in the words, they didn't have to, but they did. The devs didn't have to make mounts with Excel if you saw it, shut up for the people who didn't see it instead of flat speeds, but they did. They didn't have to voice act out the main character storyline with what must have been a shit ton of lines for some voice actors, but they did. They didn't have to put in all this extra effort into making the combat system, world, story, quests, or scenery, and could have just gone with your stock standard MMO approach and ended up with a perfectly fine MMO, but they did. And that's what makes Guild Wars 2 feel so special. Now this might- <laughs> Rambo with the bare head be crazy to say, it almost feels like this game was made by people who not just like, but maybe even love the MMO genre. But maybe that's just early onset schizophrenia from being flashbanged by the Mesmer's abilities one too many times. Really quickly, when Guild Wars 2 was first made, um, my understanding is I, I wasn't a player at that time. My understanding was that it was from a lot of developers that had played games like EverQuest and World of Warcraft, and they were trying to break out of that mold. Like, for, for example, one of the things at the launch of the game is they did not want to have tank healer DPS, you know, the holy, the holy trifecta. They did not want to have that. And at the beginning of the game, there was no healers, there was no tanks. Everyone was just kind of an adventurer. You know, you had, everyone was a DPS that had a self-heal move. And if it was on cooldown and you mess up again, then that's on you. Um, and the whole world was them trying to break the mold of what was the current MMO at that time. If somehow like me, you still haven't played Guild Wars 2 at this point and just want a bullet point list of the good versus the bad, then here it is. Starting with the bad. Guild Wars 2 throws a lot of complex systems at you, which can be overwhelming at times. There's a lot of complexity in this game and it's easy to miss something important, like the fact that you can upgrade your gear or that you have to equip your specialization to your character before you can gain its benefit. This feeling of being overwhelmed also carries over to the way things look. And sometimes there's a lot of visual clutter to deal with. Some abilities are blinding or distracting to the point that you're not quite sure if you've missed something important or not. There's a pay to win shop. And no, on this channel, we don't out and use weasel words like pay for convenience. It's all the same thing and at the end of the day it's there to get you to spend more money. None of that really matters as you're leveling up your character but that's something to keep in mind if you plan to stick with this game all the way to max level. And finally there are some bugs, strange error messages and issues with the game but nothing so far that has been game breaking or ma- I will say again that even if you let's say you sit down you download Guild Wars 2 and you're you're some rich oil baron and you slap down ten thousand dollars and just funnel it all into the game you can get some mediocre armor out of that now you'll never have a problem with you know any in-game cost that you'll ever have again you cannot get the best gear in the game or the second best gear in the game by throwing money at it you cannot now your ability to acquire it might be a little easier because you could like i don't know bribe other people to get get help stuff like that but I, I I do feel the need to point that out. Made me have an uninstall mode. And your gear doesn't matter in PvP. Moving on to the good, and there's a lot of good, so I'm just gonna stick to the main points. Guild Wars 2 base game is free to play, making it far more enjoyable knowing I could stop at any point in time and my anorexic bank account isn't going to get any thinner. There are no negative pressures here compelling me to play the game if I don't want to. This is also a very detailed game with a lot of love and time put into it, and that becomes very obvious the more you play it. Everything from the story to the world design itself
itself feels on point. Nothing about this experience is mismatched. Combat is simple to learn but has a high skill ceiling depending on what character class you pick up. But more than that, the higher your level goes, the more the flow of combat feels impactful. Initially, I told you that at the lower levels, it doesn't really matter what buttons you push. But as you level up, the world around you begins to become a threat, much like aging in real life. And if you're not paying attention to your health bar, you'll find yourself squirming around on the floor, trying to bandage yourself up before you get Bull Cosby'd. And even at low levels, I can tell that the law of this game appears to be coherent, consistent, and integrated into the gameplay itself. This is the kind of MMO story that makes you care about what you're doing. You're not just running out into the wilderness, killing 10 bears to collect 10 bear at a drop rate of 10%. You're protecting a farmer's livelihood by killing the bandits that would have otherwise stole all of his cattle. You're negotiating a peace treaty between two races who've hated each other for centuries. Or you're protecting your people from the haunted burial ground that they decided to build their house on top of. All in all, I'd say that even now, in 2023, Guild Wars 2 is worth your time. The short answer here is that this isn't just a game trying to suck you into some mindless grind fest, but a fantasy world and a story to experience. I can tell you right now that even after I'm done with this first impression, whenever I've got a spare moment, I'm likely going to pick up this game again. But it looks like our Wrangler is finally back and ready to take us into the dungeon. So let's pop this Guild Wars 2 dungeon. Our Wrangler. <laughs> Dungeon Cherry and finish this first impression the right way. All right, well, it's a little dark in here, but not too bad. Sarcophaguses. Looks like this one has a burial and undead theme to it. I guess I shouldn't be too... It's called the Ascalonian Crypts. Surprised with how many ghosts we've been killing. Oh, look at that. We've even got an NPC to guide us through our first dungeon. How considerate. First, we deal with a little bit of combat with some more dangerous than regular mobs, but nothing we can't handle. We find a key and... All right, here we go. Big door opening. This is the moment. This is when it gets interesting. What the hell? Okay, I'm sure that error message was just a one-time thing. We'll just walk back in there and... Game. How dare they take me on this emotional roller coaster just to kick me out of the first dungeon multiple <laughs> times? These bastards made me care about my character's story. They went and reminded me of why I love MMORPGs in the first place. I, I've never had that glitch. I have like 8,000 hours in this game and I don't know what that was. I'm just laughing that it happened. Place. They made me have fun, goddammit. Now, as a viewer, you might not understand why I'm so mad, but I'm supposed to remain objective, soulless, and uncaring. And Guild Wars 2 just had to ruin that for me. <laughs> I spit on you, Guild Wars 2. This <laughs> game is terrible. IGN, 0 out of 10. Don't play it. You know what? I'm logging out of this bullshit right now, and I'm never coming back. I am never touching this terrible, awful, unplayable mess ever again. What the hell is that? One eternity later. <laughs> He's using an aging filter, like from Snapchat. <laughs> what year is it? As always, big thank to all my subscribers, both old and new. And a special thank to the this guy. Those members of Big First Impression, who this time around get to watch this video before anyone else. One of you are actually the reason I tried this game in the first place. And if you wanted some idea of how long it takes me to get around to the things you suggest, well, now you know. Anyway, more- It, it, it could be even longer than that, yes. More content soon. Bye. All right, I'm, I'm giving it a like and a subscribe, okay. For anyone interested, I'm putting it in the chat right now. Oh, that that was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. Yo, that <laughs> he was he was towing the line of getting in trouble a few times there. That was uh that was that was something. That was something. Uh yeah, I did I did watch it. I have a comment here. Yo, someone was suggesting this. I was like, I think I might have watched this a year ago. My just my coke addled brain doesn't remember it. And that's the 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 sip the sip sip kind. Calm down. Yeah. So I did leave a comment. Yeah. The, yeah, I just had no memory of it. But incredible video, very entertaining. Yo, this guy can write a script. He said it took him 7 months to try it. I bet it, I bet it took him 7 months to write that script. That was fantastic. But yeah, that was his first time trying uh, Guild Wars 2. He's got a few other videos. Maybe we'll check those out later. But uh, yeah, this was fantastic. Shout out to Rose. There's links to it in the chat if you want it. 
And I'm, I'm glad he uh, enjoyed his time there. I'm glad he enjoyed his time there. Definitely have to check out more of his other content.